Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, who look at shells, death, slay, swords, peasants, vassals, minions. I'm a useful idiot. And uh, welcome. Today we're going to go back to Iraq and Syria and uh, continued stories about ISIS. And it's uh, interesting, like I've mentioned before, that we're not having much uh, of the mention of these events uh, in the media so much as everyone concentrates on events unfolding in Gaza and Ukraine. Uh, all the more convenient for the, the uh, U.S. government and its policies in Syria and Iraq. So once again, we have ISIS on the move, and in this case, it's the uh, persecution of Christians. And in general, uh, this idea that there's some kind of global war on Christianity, uh, I, I just don't really buy. Uh, in most uh, developing countries, of course, uh, secularism is dominating, and religion just isn't uh, quite as crucial part of uh, daily life. Uh, for a lot of citizens in these kind of countries in Europe and America. And uh, that's to be expected. And the fact that uh, certain religious factions are frustrated that uh, their uh, values don't dominate these societies uh, it certainly doesn't qualify as a war on Christians. And, uh, but, that, but that said, uh, let's, let's get back to uh, Syria and Iraq, where there uh, definitely is a, a war on Christians. And, and this War on Christians is part of a, a broader effort in uh, a lot of countries in that region uh, that uh, have been uh, marginalizing Christians and in some cases uh, encouraging them to leave. And places like Egypt and, uh, and uh, uh, Libya and Syria and the like, we've seen a, a lot of uh, mass exoduses of, of Christians, and that's uh, true of Iraq as well. But uh, let's get into some of these uh, recent stories. And there's been quite a number of them that all tie together to paint this picture. And we, we knew this was coming to Iraq because we've already seen it in uh, Syria. And uh, in Syria, we had the uh, ancient uh, Christian town of Malula, uh, where they actually speak the language uh, spoken in the time of uh, Jesus, uh, Aramaic. And, uh, and that, ta that town was destroyed. Um, and taken over in, in, in ancient Christian history. And it's one of the themes of, uh, that we see uh, is that uh, the uh, ISIS group is very iconoclastic and they, uh, they don't like the religious imagery used by various religions, including Christianity. So they have no respect for uh, these ancient sites that have uh, survived for thousands of years. Very unfortunate development that we've seen uh, in historical or historic uh, battles all over the world, including Afghanistan, where Buddhist shrines were destroyed by the Taliban. But uh, anyway, we had a Greek Catholic church, an Armenian Catholic church, and Shiite shrines and mosques uh, destroyed in Syria. And, uh, and, and announcements of uh, this uh, new treatment of Christians uh, all across Syria has been tested in Syria, is now being done in Iraq. So it should not come as a surprise to anyone. And uh, also, uh, there's uh, part of it is a uh, propaganda war, a media war, a, a PR uh, campaign war, because uh, as it turns out, the population of Christians uh, in some of these areas is exaggerated by uh, uh, Christian news sites, of course. Uh, for example, in Mosul, Iraq, uh, supposedly there's only about 200 Christians left, but uh, some Christian sites are saying that up to 10,000 Christians are being persecuted in uh, Mosul in northern Iraq, and that just isn't true. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get back to uh, the, the big picture, and that is ISIS announced in northern Iraq that uh, uh, Christians can either convert to Islam, pay a tax called the jizya, or uh, leave, or die. And that, that's the four choices. And uh, the, the system they're instigating is that Christians must abide by the terms of a Dima contract and pay a tax called a Jizya. And these are concepts that go back uh, apparently to about the 7th century, I understand. And uh, so they're bringing, once again, uh, uh, ISIS very savvy in their creation of the Caliphate and the state and evoking uh, a lot of uh, folk mythology and ancient history of uh, Islamic movements in that region in order to uh, consolidate and define their power in the regions they've taken over. So that's a, a fascinating aspect of, of what they're doing here. But uh, the official statement, and this was broadcast over uh, uh, loudspeakers and trucks 
in Mosul. And uh, like I say, this is a, a, a repeat of what we've already seen in uh, Syria. And uh, the, the quote said, quote, we offer them three choices, Islam, the Dima contract, or involving payment of Jizra. If they refuse this, they will have nothing but the sword, unquote. So there's a direct quote of what uh, ISIS is, is telling people in their, uh, in their occupied territories. And supposedly last uh, Saturday was the deadline and the option for either leaving the borders of the Islamic Caliphate or paying this tax, um, or being killed, and I'm sure we'll see examples of that. And like I say, there's similar order issued uh, last February in the Syrian city of Raqqa, and um, Jews were there to be to paid in gold, but it only amounts to a couple dollars a month apparently. And they're also not supposed to display uh, their religion in public, and uh, the con like I say, the concept of Dima or governing of non-Muslims living under Islamic law rule. Islamic rule dates back to the 7th century and lasted all the way until the mid 19th century. So it had a long history and uh, is easy for ISIS to use uh, to, uh, to, in this current situation, use uh, this uh, mythology, this Islamic mythology, in order to consolidate power. Uh, One million uh, uh, Christians in Iraq in total, but um, a lot of these Christians are being uh, squeezed out in the, these, these uh, uh, battles between the Sunni and the Shia, and uh, Christians end up in the middle of them. This certainly is what happened in Syria, and now we see it happening in, in Iraq. Uh, Mosul had a Christian population of around 100,000 in 2004, so 10 years ago, uh, 100,000 Christians in Mosul, and it was down to 5,000 uh, uh, after the U.S. invasion and occupation, and uh, my understanding is that there's only 200 left, so hardly the 10,000 that some sites are declaring. And um, Christian communities have existed in that region uh, for eons, and so this uh, cleansing of a lot of the, these regions of Christians is uh, changing a tapestry uh, that's been in place for thousands of years, and certainly an unfortunate development. And uh, this this also uh, encompasses uh, Israel. Israel has uh, also been involved in uh, prejudice against Christians, and uh, we find a lot of Arab Christians uh, moving uh, in, in, en masse overseas, like many of the Christians in uh, in uh, Syria and Iraq as well. Certainly not the necessarily the same type of environment that's making them leave, but nonetheless, uh, Christians now. Uh, make up the bulk of tourists who come to Israel to uh, visit ancient Christian sites, but for the most part, it's uh, being taken over by the Israeli government and Zionists, uh, who don't have any interest necessarily in having uh, Christians control holy sites in uh, in Israel, and that's another uh, long-standing uh, battle uh, between uh, Christian interests and uh, Israeli uh, Jewish interests control of holy sites in, in Israel. So, uh, and then we've had some other dramatic events recently that uh, reconfirm this ISIS uh, attack on um, Christians. But it's, uh, as I should point out, this ISIS uh, battle against Christians is, is uh, part of an overall uh, policy of going after anyone uh, who doesn't believe in the uh, ISIS Sunni uh, radical uh, view of Islam. So it includes Turkmen, and uh, many other uh, sects, um, including the uh, Kurds, and now uh, who are incidentally are Sunnis, but uh, the the uh, ISIS doesn't seem to have much allegiance to anyone other than their specific uh, strain. So we have uh, the destruction of the Syriac Catholic dio diocese in Mosul was burned and destroyed by the Islamic State ISIS, uh, and purportedly an 1,800-year-old church. And uh, they're interested in uh, destroying all tombs, shrines, statues, and pictures, and it really doesn't matter uh, whose they are. They generally go after Christian and Shia, but as it turns out, they'll all also go after uh, Sunni uh, shrines. In fact, uh, it's announced today that ISIS destroyed Jonah's tomb in Mosul, and this is the Sunni mosque of the prophet Yunus, uh, which is Arabic for Jonah. And yes, the same Jonah purportedly who was swallowed by the whale but uh, also a Sunni 
mosque any uh, Sunni prophet, and so it's kind of interesting. Uh, ISIS would risk uh, alienating the Sunnis and Ba'athists who support them in Iraq right now uh, by uh, uh, by outrageously destroying uh, their shrines and temples as well. So it'll be interesting to see if the loyalty of the Sunnis can, uh, remains consolidated in light of uh, the destruction of uh, Sunni mosques. And uh, apparently they also destroyed the uh, temple of the prophet uh, Dan Daniel, uh, that tomb, as well as the uh, tomb of Imam bin Hassan. Bin Hassan. So uh, they're, uh, they've been very busy uh, destroying these uh, churches and mosques, and uh, Christians certainly uh, being uh, treated sometimes a little bit better than the Shias at least. And uh, all the churches in Mosul are being systematically destroyed, and uh, 13 Shia mosques were also destroyed. So, as I, I, I said, the Christians are just being swept up in the same um, uh, dragnet that uh, Shia are being put through. So, um, so to call it a war on Christians, per se, is, is a slightly uh, misleading, but uh, not entirely. It's just interesting to see the ISIS uh, finally uh, make a concerted effort to deal with Christians who are now finding themselves in the middle of this caliphate. And uh, in Raqqa, Syria, we also had three churches that have been closed. In fact, one of them, the Armenian Catholic Martyrs Church, uh, crosses were removed and ISIS flags hung and it turned into an Islamic center. And then uh, we also have uh, ancient Christian Armenian populations uh, being emptied and evacuated out of Aleppo, Syria. So we see systematic uh, persecution of uh, Christians all across um, the uh, caliphate right now. And uh, I guess they don't really need to, to move against uh, too many Jews because they've already left. So uh, so there we have it. We have a, uh, a, a systematic persecution of Christians under ISIS in the new caliphate stretching across Iraq and uh, Syria. So I'm sure we'll be hearing about more uh, atrocities against uh, Christians in both these regions and a uh, ancient Christian culture that has existed in Iraq and Syria for uh, thousands of years uh, of continuous presence uh, now finding themselves uh, expelled from that region. A sad uh, historic de development to be sure. I'm a useful idiot, don't you be one too.